<laughs> hey guys, it's Bridgette with Sandy Seed Company, and I'm laughing because I love sweet peas, and ah, sometimes I get a little too intense with these guys, but we're in the garden. It's March, and I'm super excited to do a garden March tour and show you guys what I have growing, what I have blooming, and we'll kind of talk about when I planted it so that you can have a garden that blooms with, with this many flowers like I do, and also just what's happening with the garden right now. Now, before I get into that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. So, this is one of my pride and joys. This is my sweet pea trellis, and I love pointing this out to people because these are blooming and it's March. Now what happens a lot of times is people see that they're blooming and they get all excited and they want to run out and get seeds. These were actually planted in October. So they're not a quick crop. They take quite a long time to grow. And now this is specific to zone 9 and 10. You plant these in the fall, they get a lot of beautiful vegetative growth and then they start to flower as soon as the days start to get a bit a bit longer and the and the uh, weather starts warming up. So these guys are going to bloom happily well until probably the end of April and if you haven't grown sweet peas before it's an incredible flower that you can cut a very small vase of, put it in your room, close the door and your whole room will smell like it. It's absolutely delicious. So every year I grow these, I love them. They're looking really great right now. You also see a lot of other key things that are happening in the garden that are relevant to the time of year. So this was actually a row of mescaline, mescaline mix and you can see tons of it is going to flower. So we have tons of mustard greens that are going to flower. We've got arugula and all of the crops that are going to flower right now, I don't really care because I'm, I'm done eating them, but you can see the pollinators love them. We've got bees all over them, so I'm just gonna leave it until I need this space for something else. But another really important thing to, to look out for is new pests that are gonna start developing right now as the weather gets warmer. So you can actually see here, that is yummy, delicious aphids, and they are covered on this guy. Now, why are they happening right now? Well, they're happening now because this crop has been in the ground for a really long time. So it's already stressed, it's getting older. The aphids are attacking this particular crop. The other thing is it's getting warmer. As the temperatures warm up, insects in general, but particularly aphids, proliferate a lot quicker. They're growing very quickly. And so you're gonna start noticing them on your broccoli, your cabbage, your cauliflower your leafy greens, and they're usually on the tender tips of the plant. So you can actually see there's, there's more here. So because these guys have a lot of aphids on them, I'm probably gonna take these out pretty soon. I'll compost this. Um, any other leafy greens that still look good, I'm just gonna keep these and keep munching on them. Now, if you've seen our other videos, you know that I talk about harvesting heavily to prevent this bolting process from happening as quickly. So the leafy greens that I have in here that haven't gone to flower, I'm gonna wanna harvest these really hard. I'm gonna wanna come in and give them a haircut and enjoy as many rounds of the um, crop as I can before it naturally starts going to flower. If I just come in and kind of harvest a couple leaves here and there, it's gonna go to flower pretty quickly. So that's a pro tip on how to get the most out of your, your space. Let's keep checking out the garden and see what else we got going here. So you can see that I've been ripping out crops. I've got uh, cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower that is you know, done. It's given me everything it's gonna give. I'm starting to pull those out, getting ready to compost all of that. And I'm really, at this point, I'm not planting anything in my garden that's not gonna be ready very quickly because I need room for tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, all of my warm season crops that are really gonna dominate my garden from the end of March or April all the way until the fall. So I'm not putting any crops in that are gonna take a lot of room. I did put in quite a few flowers this year. You can see one of my favorite flowers. This is calendula and I love planting it because I make a calendula salve every year for my hands, it really helps with our farm work. And I planted this in the fall. So if you guys have seen our videos, you know I talk a lot about planting your flower seeds in the fall in zone nine and 10. That's because you get a nice, big, robust plant, and then as soon as the temperatures warm up, you get really big displays of blooms. Yes, it's a little extra work, but I've got the space, and I want these guys to bloom as, as long as they can into the spring and summer, and making sure that they have a deep root system and a happy plant is really gonna make a big difference. You do still have time to plant those from seed now, 
they're just not going to get as big because it's going to start warming up and these plants really thrive in the cooler temperatures. Uh, you can also see I have a lot of mess that I need to clean up. I have stuff I need to harvest. I've got tons of radishes in here that I need to really get to it and harvest the rest of these radishes and, and enjoy them in, in my salads. But we've just been eating so much out of the garden that can't even can't even manage it all. The other thing you're gonna notice is we have a lot of cleanup to do. This is wild nasturtium. Look at this whole area. It's basically being taken over by wild nasturtium. Really need to clean this up. If you're in San Diego County specifically and you have this wild nasturtium, it is beautiful. It is such a cool plant. But forewarning, it is uh, it can be detrimental to other crops. We actually had this in the orchard and it looked beautiful and I just let it go. Started climbing up one of my trees and really did a lot of damage to the tree because it didn't let a lot of sunlight get to the tree. So you gotta manage this and really watch it. The other thing you're gonna see is that I do have some last lingering cool season crops. Um, I've got a few, few last beautiful heads of cauliflower. Now, this will be the last of the season. Why? because I don't have time to plant another cabbage, broccoli, or cauliflower and get a nice, beautiful head before the temperatures warm up and the days get longer and it wants to go to flower very quickly. The other thing is, is I need this room for my tomatoes. So I don't wanna put in a cool season crop that's gonna take a lot of days for maturity because I have other plans. I'm moving into springtime. Now this will be delicious to eat and it will be the last one of the year. So. I'm looking forward to having that for lunch. The other thing you're gonna notice too is our potatoes look amazing. Look how beautiful that is. Our potatoes are really looking great. Now in zone nine and 10, you've got two options. You can actually plant in the fall, which is what we recommend because you're just gonna get maximum root development. Or you can also plant in the spring. So if you haven't planted your potatoes, you absolutely can plant them now. Um, I just have a few months ahead of you guys by putting these in in the fall. Our weather and our temperatures are mild enough that I can do that. I also have garlic. This is all um, elephant garlic that we've got growing here, which I'm really excited about. And we've got more potatoes over here. Now we're in the back portion of my garden here, which I've actually ripped out everything that's grown over the winter and I'm making room for summer crops. I'm doing a key thing here. I am putting down compost, and we actually put down all of this compost prior to all the rain that we had, which is great. It really leaches all that goody into the ground. And the other thing that I'm doing right now, because we're in transition, I don't have anything growing back here, is I'm letting my chickens out, and I'm letting them go crazy, and letting them eat all the yummy worms and weeds. Come on, ladies. Come on, guys. Come on, come play. Come play, guys. Those are some fat, happy chickens. Now part of the reason why they're so fat and they're so happy is because they get to munch on all the goody in the garden. They play in the compost. And now they're doing a lot of good for me right now. They're digging up weeds, they're cultivating, they're eating any uh, insects that really overwintered. And I wanna let them out right now because I've got nothing else growing. So they're gonna do the job for me while I'm busy doing other stuff. Now, no matter what your garden looks like in March in zone nine and 10, if it looks like mine or if it looks totally different, that's okay. Every garden grows a little bit different, but for us right now, we're really thinking about the spring. I'm doing all the prep that I can to get weeds pulled. I'm fixing irrigation. I'm prepping the soil and I'm getting ready for what I'm hoping is going to be the best spring yet.